Look. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Let's Play Super Mario Odyssey. I am Filthy Scrub. It is a wonderful day. In the last episode, we did some Light Kingdom stuff. We did some Moon Kingdoms. Not Moon Kingdom. Oh, spoilers. Uh, we did some... <laughs> We did some Cloud Kingdom stuff, and now we're gonna do some Lost Kingdom stuff. Is that not the most descriptive ep episode description you've ever heard in your life? Um, yeah, we're here. We gotta fix the Odyssey. Also, so fun story about the Cloud Kingdom. Fun story. This is gonna be a very uh, lengthy build-up, but I hope it's worth it. So, I do improv. I do comedy improv, which is basically if you've watched Whose Line Is It Anyway with Drew Carey or the new one, which is not as good with the girl that, whose name I can never remember. Um, if you've ever watched Whose Line Is It Anyway, it's improv comedy. It's basically, you do little scenes, little skits or whatever, but you make them up on the spot. So nothing is planned. You don't have anything really going into it, with some exceptions. I'm sorry, I have a lot of burping from the water that I just chugged in between episodes. Um, but yeah, so, improv comedy. You do... You just make the funnies without really planning anything. And I was in a show recently where we were doing the scene and the whole scene was basically like they were... Uh, they were exploring... They were like, expl I don't remember what the suggestion was or what the context of the scene was, but basically they were exploring and they were in the clouds, right? And I had to enter. And the, the gimmick of the game is called Buzzers and Bells. The gimmick of the game is that when you, you can say something and the host who's hosting the actual show can either go, uh -uh, or they can go, ding, ding, ding. And if they, if they do the buzzer chat, if they go, uh -uh, you have to change what you just said to something else. And they don't want you to change it just like, oh, let's eat a sandwich, to, uh -uh, oh, let's eat some pizza. Uh -uh. No, they want you to, like, completely change it up, right? So I went into the scene, I entered the scene with this mentality of, like, I'm going to come in, I'm going to be this, like, basically rough, tough, like, what are you doing here, get out of here, you can't be here kind of guy. And they, they buzzed that, and so I was like, okay. So then I, I did this, like, sumo wrestler walk in, and then they buzzed that, and so I was like, okay. So then I did this... Very epic, I might add, slide, um, slid in, literally slid into the DMs, and I showed up and I was like, hello there, and I did like this seducive pose, and I was like, I am the Cloud Prince, and it was this whole character, and it was very funny, and people enjoyed it a lot, I did not make it sound as funny as it was, but it was funny, and, um, so it was funny, people enjoyed it, so then, we have this other game that we do called... Uh, what is it called? Advice panel. Where we all have characters that we develop and we come up with and we refine. And then people in the audience ask questions and we answer them as our characters. So you spend time on characters and you, and you think of these characters, but for the most part, you don't... Like, it's still improv because you don't know what questions are going to be asked, you don't really know... And you get some weird questions. Like, it's not like you can plan, like, oh, they're going to ask about this or that. Like, it's interesting. And so, I was like, this is a character. This is perfect. The Cloud Prince. Everyone loved it. It's funny. It's a great character. And so, I have been working on it, and I've been refining the lore of the Cloud Prince. And basically, what I've got so far is that he is literally just made of cloud, and so he... Oh, you can't kill these. Interesting. I thought you could kill everything. You cannot kill these. Anyways, the lore is... He comes from the Cloud Kingdom. His name is Sir Nimbus. He is the, quote, prince. But given that he's a cloud, he's literally just water, so he doesn't really have a gender or, like, anything like that. Um, funny, fun fact, I think this is actually faster to just do this. Um... But yeah, so he doesn't have gender, he doesn't have, like, a definition, he comes from the clouds, he doesn't subscribe, he doesn't ascribe to our, our earthly traditions and our earthly mentalities. And so, the gimmick of the character is basically he's looking for someone to mate with on this water cycle, which is basically his life cycle. He eternally goes through the water cycle. And, um... And the, the laws of, of earthly realms do not exist, so there is no... There isn't, like, this idea of dating, courtship, and whatever. It's No, that doesn't exist. He just wants to get someone 
to come up, keep him company while he's still a cloud, and then when he precipitates and rains, and then he's just gone, and it's like, whatever, okay, fine. And then he just evaporates again and does it over again, and I, I've come up with this lore and I've come up with this character, and basically it's an excuse to hit on the audience. I, I really enjoy making people uncomfortable in improv and hitting on them, and so I thought it would be funny if I were to come up with a character that could do that. That's basically what it is. It's basically an excuse to do that. Um, and it's fun. It's good. I think I'm going to incorporate different uh, cycles. Like, I'm going to pretend like he's been around forever because he's, you know, a cloud. And basically incorporate, like, oh, well, in my 781st water cycle or something. Or be like, oh, I remember in 10,000 BC, you know, because he exists forever. Water doesn't just disappear. Matter exists, and it exists. And unless you change its chemical makeup, it is always going to be what it is, I think. I don't know. It's been a while since I took chemistry. Uh, run. Okay. I need to get a moon so I don't die. Did I get all five of the pieces? I did, okay. I need to definitely not die then, because... Oh no, I can die. It'll still be where it is. But I want coins. And Captain Toad. Yes, that's right. I want you, Captain Toad. I see Toadette. She doesn't even know what she is. Pretending to be Peach. Who she thinks she is. Captain Toad, you're the only man I need. Okay, this got weird. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, look at these little wiggly boys. They're so great. This is probably one of the most uh, creative, fun... It, it's very Mario. Like, this this power-up, this... I, I guess I'll call it a power-up. This enemy, this capture, is one of the more Mario-esque ones in this game. Like, there's some that are just very out there. Like, why the heck are we a frog? Why the heck are we... Um, there's, you can turn into weird stuff, and I won't say it for the sake of spoilers, but you can turn into some interesting things. And I like that this kingdom just has a colorful, unique-looking enemy that isn't necessarily based on anything in real life. It's just, it's just clever, it's colorful, it's nice, it's pleasant. Much like this poison death trap. This purple drank. Very poisonous, very deadly. But it's very pretty. I like it. Lost Kingdom, aesthetically, is one of my favorites. Actual kingdom-wise, I don't much care for it. I think it's kind of... It's it's small, it's... Some of the moons are weird. And speedrun, I think more than anything else, I just have a PTSD from trying to speedrun this game, because this kingdom has a really cool skip you can do that I've finally kind of gotten down, but I'm still bad at it. And it's just a frustrating kingdom to speedrun, because you just die a lot, and you're like, well, what this is time loss, you know? But, it's alright. It's very nice. And these guys are here, too. They exist. Huh. They could be a little finicky. Sometimes they don't do exactly what you want. I don't know what these guys are called. Because I know the, the, the wigglers, they're called tropical wigglers. But I don't know what these guys are called. Oh, yes. So yeah, I don't know. It's cool, it's fun. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a couple more moons, do the first part of Metro Kingdom, because that is where we go next. And then from there, in the episode probably. Alright, give me this hat. You don't actually need these guys. You can just... You can just, uh... I'll show you on the next one. You can just jump around it. <sighs> but yeah, there's a little speedrunning jump you can do if you go... From that green tree, you can actually make this jump. It's insane. It's hard to do. I'll try to do it, actually. I'll try to show it off. Because it's cool. It looks very cool if you do it right, but... It's very hard to master, especially trying to do it quickly. Um, I've gotten better at it. I think I'm okay. I think I can do it probably first try. Oh, nailed it. Look at that. Even if you bonk, it's okay. It's not a big deal. But yeah, you can just ignore these guys, go around, do whatever you want. Technically, you only need 10 moons in this kingdom. I'm just gonna get to the top of this part and then end it. Um, and then I'll probably go to bed. It's late. But... It's all good. It's a fun kingdom. So yeah, that's about all I got. I don't know. 
So I, I was going through, actually this is kind of interesting, so I was I was trying to play NES games the other day, right? I was trying to explore the Nintendo NES online app thing. And it's okay, it's cool, I like it. I'm not a huge fan of NES games because I'm just bad at them and they're hard. Um, they're very unforgiving. But they're cool, they're kind of fun. And so I was doing it and I was trying to use... The Joy-Cons have the little attachments you can put on these things. Um, they have the little attachment that you can put on, and as you put it on, it makes it basically makes it easier to play with one Joy-Con. I've never put them on mine. People always complain about it when they have to use one Joy-Con for Smash or whatever. I finally was like, okay, I'm gonna play NES games. I'll put it on. Why not? I went to put it on, and I looked, and I have two sets of Joy-Cons. In one set, I got a plus and a minus, which is fine. Um, the other set, I got two pluses or two minuses. I got two of the minus side, and none of the plus. I'm pretty sure that was an accident, like I'm pretty sure that was a factory mistake, but I found that kind of funny. I'm like, I have three minus sides and one plus side for four Joy-Cons, and you can't, like, you can't put it on because they're not made to fit the side that they don't belong on. So it's kind of annoying, and I might email Nintendo and just be like, uh, guys, you sent me two minus sides, uh, we'll see. It's not, it's not a huge deal. I'm not that beat, I'm not gonna beat myself up, I'm not gonna cry about it, you know. But it is interesting. What am I doing? Skip all the cutscenes! Yeah. So it was interesting. I played Metroid on my stream. Mandatory stream plug every episode. I promise I'm not gonna keep doing that. Most of the people that are gonna be watching this are probably from my stream anyways. Shout out to you all. Um, it just comes up in conversation because it's the only other thing I do. Um, but yeah, I played Metroid for a bit. I played... Ooh, this music! I forgot about this. That's nice music. What a new donk. Yeah, so... Played Metroid. I played a little bit of Ice Climber. I played... Played Mario 1. I tried playing Ghosts and Goblins off-screen, and that is rightfully a very, very difficult game to play. Oh, I haven't been doing the portraits either. Gosh, that's gonna be annoying. Um, that's fine, it's post-game stuff, whatever. But yeah, what's up, Pauline? I love that voice line. She's like, oh! Uh, hey, I, uh, can't really talk right now. There's a big monster there. It's probably one of my least favorite bosses in this game, just because it's lengthy. It's not hard, necessarily. It's just lengthy and very easy to mess up on. But yeah. So it's been good. It's been a good day. I don't know. Life is life, you know? There's not a lot to talk about. Oh no, I don't want this guy. Hold on. I forgot. I forgot. I don't want to be on there either. New Dog City is a great kingdom. But it is going to be a pain in the butt, 100. And I'm not talking about the jump rope. The jump rope is not that hard. Um, I did it without glitching, like first, not first try, but I did it within a few minutes. I didn't spend 10 hours on it like most people did. Oh, dang it! Okay, that was the jump. That was what I wanted to do. Look at that. But yeah, I didn't spend a ton of time on the jump rope thing, like everyone else was like... Like, before I played the game, I had a friend who'd 100 percent it, and he was like... He was the one, he's the one who's copy I'm borrowing, actually, so thank you, Reese. But he was like, yeah, the jump rope and the volleyball were like the hardest things ever. Neither one was particularly, like, super hard, they're just lengthy and annoying, I feel like, you know? Like, they're not super duper hard to do. They're just very long. And long is not always the best, especially in a fast-paced game like this, where you just kind of go. So, this boss fight is in line with that. It's kind of long. New Donk is big, it's long, purple coins are a little bit tedious, but for the most part, I think most of the moons are pretty fair and pretty fun to find. Like, I... it's hard not to enjoy New Donk City. Like, it could be my 10th playthrough. I'd probably still love 100%ing this kingdom because it is so fun. It is such a pleasant kingdom. Especially, like, right now it's not very pleasant. It's very dark, very brooding. But it gets so nice, as you probably know. It becomes such a wonderful place to explore. 
Uh, should I get this moon? Yeah, let's get this moon. We're already here. Why not? I'm not going out of my way for moons, but I'm also not going to go out of my way to avoid them. If they're on my path, they're on my way. Oh, okay, that's fine. Is there a... can I take a thing? Is there an electric? No, I gotta go back up? Alright, I'll get right back up there. Hold on. Okay, stuck to the landing. I'm gonna actually- I'm gonna take my time in this room. There's a lot of things to collect in here, and I'd really rather not do it again. I'd really rather not come back in here, because it's- it's very linear, but it's also very just bland and confusing, and there's a ton of enemies, and I don't really want to deal with them, and my B button was not working for some reason. I tried to jump on that question mark block like five times. <laughs> I also was having trouble, so I was at the tournament, right? Not to go back to that, but like, I felt like I was having trouble. I, I feel like I make a lot of excuses, right? I'll tell you that. Uh, no excuse for that one. Okay, once again, back on my feet. It's fine. Everything's fine. But yeah, I, I tend to try, I'm trying not to make a lot of excuses, or Johns, as they're called, which I've never heard of. I think that that's an outdated term. We don't really use that anymore. But, um, in competitive Smash, I mean. But I do feel like I was having a lot of trouble. Like, my controller was not agreeing with me. I was trying to push buttons and they just were not coming out. And it was very frustrating because I was playing against, um, who was I playing against? I was, I was the Samus, right? And so I'm trying to jump and, like, avoid getting hit by their stuff, and, like, the jump button is just not working for me, and I'm just... it's not responding the way I want it to, and I'm just getting hit by all these charge shots. It was... it was... it was rough. I was also just tending to... I, I tend to get frustrated very easily with games, especially competitive ones. So when I do get frustrated, then it turns into me being like, Meh, and then I get really angry, and then I just don't play well because I'm mad. So that was probably a big factor of it, and I've recognized that, and I'm doing a lot better than I used to, trust me. I used to be a very rage gamer, like, not even in a funny way, just like in a, oh, well, this is awkward, I don't really want to hang out here anymore, like, you're not fun to be around. So I've worked through that. Ironically, it was my anger problems that helped me start looking into my mental health stuff and getting the, the help I needed, so... There's no shame in being like, I got a problem and I need to fix it, you know? I don't need that, I'm a big man. So yeah, highly recommend if anyone feels like, like, I don't know, I was a very angry person internally, and it's weird because on the surface I'm not. Like, I don't get mad with people very easily, I get frustrated with technology and with competition. Those are the two things that get me, like, angry, you know? Especially, like, the internet. When it doesn't work on it, too, I get very frustrated. I've been trying to work on that, and hopefully we'll see me do better with that as time goes on. Um, I'm actually, I'm gonna get these purple coins, and then I'm gonna end the episode here, and I'm not gonna fight the boss, and I'm gonna leave it on this cliffhanger, because we're at about 20 minutes already, and my throat hurts, and my roommates are trying to sleep, and I'm just tired, so... Thank you guys for watching, though. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!